Greetings, I'm Professor K. And in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about installing and using WebMap to display our NMAP scanning results. WebMap allows us to take and display our NMAP results in an XML format, meaning that we can use a web browser to view our scan results. And when we're done, we can generate a PDF file that displays all of the results from that NMAP scan. We're going to be installing WebMap as a Docker application. To do this, we're going to have to have Docker installed inside of our Kali installation. So to see if I have Docker installed, I can do docker-v at my terminal prompt and hit enter. And it'll come back and it'll tell me whether or not I have Docker and what the current version of Docker is that is installed. If Docker is not installed, you'll want to go ahead and install it very quickly using the following commands. First, as always, before you install anything, make sure you do an update. Once you've done that update, you can go ahead and you can do an upgrade. I can go ahead and clear my screen here so we can see this just a little bit better. And the next thing we need to do is actually install the Docker. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this command in to my terminal. And you can see that the command is quite simple. sudo app install space docker dash ce stands for community edition space dash y just means answer yes to any prompts. Now once you do have docker installed you need to start the service. Just go ahead and type in the following command sudo systemctl space start space docker. Hit enter and it comes back to the prompt letting you know that that command completed successfully. Now if you would like to enable docker to start automatically at logon then you can change the word start to enable and that will have Docker start when you start your installation of Kali. To check and see if Docker is working properly, we can run the Hello World image. Any warning message about not being able to find an image for Docker locally is a normal error message and it can be ignored. So now that we do have Docker installed and we have confirmed that it is working correctly, we can move on with installing web map. Now to do this, the first thing we have to do is create a directory for our NMAP scans. This is the location from which our NMAP scan results will be pulled from and displayed inside of our web map application. So I've typed in MKDIR, which stands for make directory space forward slash temp forward slash web map. Go ahead and hit enter, and it comes back to the prompt letting us know that that command completed successfully. So the next thing we have to do is type in docker space run dash d, give it a space, and then a backslash. We hit enter, and at the next prompt, we're going to type in dash dash name web map space backslash. We hit enter. At the next prompt, we're going to type in dash small letter h space web map space backslash. Hit enter. We're next going to type in a dash small letter p followed by the port number that we're going to use in our browser to view our nmap results using web map. Now this is going to be port 8000. So we type in dash p 8000 colon 8000 space backslash. After we hit enter, at the next prompt, we're going to type in dash v space forward slash tmp for temp forward slash webmap, which is the directory from which they will pull in our nmap results and we will view them as an XM file inside of webmap. We hit enter. On this next command, this is where we're going to pull down the actual Docker image from the Docker site. So everything now has been configured. Everything is now set for us to build this Docker image of web map. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it says it's unable to find the image locally. You can ignore that message. Once it sees that the image is not compiled locally, it will then go to the Docker site and pull down the web map 
image for us. Do be patient because this download is rather large and it does take a little while for it to complete. Now that web map has been downloaded and the Docker image is installed, we're going to go ahead and clear our screen and perform an nmap scan. For this nmap scan, I will be using my install of Minisploitable 2 because we know that it's vulnerable and we're going to get some good results. So I've restarted my machine, so my instance of Docker is not going to start automatically, so I have to tell it to start. To do that, I've typed in the following command, systemctl space start docker. Now once I have the Docker service started, I then need to start the web map image inside of Docker. To do that, I type in docker start web map. Hit enter, and it comes back letting me know that that command completed successfully. So now that I have my Docker program started and I have my web map application inside of Docker started, we can now conduct an nmap scan. And I've typed in nmap space dash small letter s capital T space. Now these are all switches, but the switch that we're concerned about is the dash O capital X. This stands for output my results as an XML file and save it in forward slash temp forward slash web map and give it the name of myscan.xml and I want you to scan the IP address of 10.0.2.11 which is the IP address for my Metasploitable 2 installation. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Now this is going to take a little while to complete and when it does we'll come back and we'll take a look at the results up inside of WebMap. So my nmap scan has completed. We now have the results and those results have been saved up inside of the temp folder inside of a subdirectory called webmap. And in just a moment, we're going to open up a web browser. We're going to go to that location and we're going to open up those scan results as an XML file. But before we do that, we have to grab a token. So I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen here. And to do this, I'm going to go ahead and paste the following command in here. Now I need this token so that I can log into webmap for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and it comes back and it gives me the token right here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and that's what you should do as well. And now I'm going to open up a web browser. Now once you have your web browser inside of Kali opened up, you're going to go up to the address bar, you're going to type in http colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 8000. That is the port we will be using to open this web map application. Now that token that we generated at the terminal, we're going to right click in here and we're just going to paste it, just like so. Now go ahead and press login. Now it's going to ask you if you want to save. Go ahead and say yes, let's save it. Now you'll see down here that we have our web map application opened up and it's found the nmap scan results that we just created and it's called myscan.xml. Now this abbreviated scan results that you're looking at here is the first page that's going to open up and you can see that it tells you you have one XML file. In the current directory you have 23 open ports, no closed ports, and no filtered ports and it gives you the name of the file, the timestamp for that particular scan, and the host count. We only scanned one host and it gives you the breakdown of the stats which we just read up here. So I can go ahead now and I can open up this file and you'll see that we get a nice breakdown of the scan results. So the ports that were scanned and found to be open, filtered, or closed are given a color code and you can see that mine were all open and so the color code for that would be green. Filtered is yellow and closed is red. And over here you can see the breakdown of the ports and how they are color coded. And so you can scroll down and you can look at some more results and see what services are currently available. Now underneath here we have this option to generate the PDF report which we'll look at in just a moment. And there's also supposed to be an availability to check for CVE and exploits based on the scan results that we generated. But when I click on this, it doesn't do much. It just does a reload and that's about it. All right, so now I have another feature here that I can look at, which is called the network view, which is pretty slick. 
This is all animated, as you can see. And I can move this around. I can move this over here if I like. If I click on the device, it opens up and it gives me an expanded view of all of the different ports and services that are running on those ports. I can use the roller on my mouse to zoom in and zoom out. I can then click on any of these I wish to and I can see the results of the scan, such as what is available on that particular port, what service is running, what the version of it is, and any other information of importance. Over here on the left you have your quick start menu and again you can go down through this quick start menu and you can pretty much go through the scan results as I've just shown you doing it manually through the actual page itself. So regardless if you're a digital forensics investigator or you're a pen tester or an anal retentive hacker and you want to see those results and save them in a format that is presentable well, you can do that now with the PDF report. So I can go ahead and click on this, and in just a moment, it's going to generate me a nice PDF report. Once your report has been generated, you can just scroll through it, and you can see all the results. Everything's given to you. Nice presentable format that you can include in your final report for your pen test or for your investigation. And so in this short video presentation, we got to see how we can install WebMap as a Docker application, and we can use it to view our NMAP results in a much cleaner format. So if you have any questions, you've got any concerns, don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.